It's Thursday, heavy lipstick day. All right, this is from the Dave Ramsey Show. My fiance is demanding her dream wedding or she's out of here. All right, I've not heard this. I'm hearing this for the first time with you. Let's go ahead and minimize the screen. For those of you that are exercising to this that have written to me, turn on those timers. This is gonna be good. Let's start. Anthony's going to start us off in Los Angeles. Hi, Anthony. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you doing, Mr. Ramsey? Great, man. What's up? Um, so my fiance and I recently got engaged last August. Congratulations. And uh, we've been fighting about the cost of it. I told her that I wanted to pay off my debt first before we went and tried to pay off a big wedding. Wonderful guy. Smart guy. Kudos. Snaps. Yeah. He's like, honey, we need to pay off some debt before we get married. 100% behind him. This guy's a keeper. And I just paid off my debt this month. And uh, with the wedding that she wants, I can't afford it with it only being six months away. Okay, so he, so he is debt free. More snaps, more snaps. And the wedding that she wants is, he can't afford it because it's only six months away. All right, so, um, Let's see what wedding she wants. All right, people, get out those betting cards. I swear to gosh, I need, I need a betting table or something over here, okay? Let's see how much wedding she wants. And I've been telling her that I don't well, feel what comfortable. What is the price going. tag? All right, official bets. Official bets. Take out. Take your bets. Take your bets. Official price tag for the wedding. Well, I know a young couple that about 15 years ago, not 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 me, okay. But if there was neighbors, and I know they spent fifty thousand on a wedding, so I guess wedding debt's all kind of relative. So I, I'll say twenty five thousand. I'll say twenty five thousand. Place your bets. Sixteen thousand. Okay, so sixteen thousand. Now remember, we all know that debt is relative, so sixteen thousand. But he's debt free. This guy is a keeper. I lost the bet. I said twenty five thousand, so I think I'm something like one-to-one -one at this point right this guy's a keeper he's got his priorities straight he has his head on straight and I'm looking at the title of this going oh my the price tag is 20,000 but she we she paid six uh, four thousand so there's 16 left what do you whoa whoa okay I get some points for that I said 25,000 so I guess she paid four thousand sixteen thousand left it's a twenty thousand dollar wedding now this video is from a year ago so we're also talking during some economic crunch times for people and the fact that this young man I, I assume he's a young man okay um got out of debt especially during the time with the pandemic and all that stuff got got to give him kudos on that we were actually i think just slightly out of the pandemic but still that was a rough time period for many people and if he got himself out of debt that meant during the pandemic time he was working to get out of debt this guy's a keeper Mike. Uh, about 30 40 a year and she wants a twenty thousand dollar wedding if he makes 30 to 40 so let's give him the high end okay because he says 30 to 40 after taxes and all that she basically would like him to put an entire years of income towards a wedding i'm, I'm gonna let the cake keep rolling before i chew her out <laughs> okay what does she make uh, about the same, sir. We're both in the military. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead with your question. Uh, and that's basically... So, I was telling her that I don't feel comfortable going back in debt. Uh, Perfect. And, young man, you stand your ground. You don't budge. You stand your ground. You have work to get out of debt. You need to find a woman that sees money the same way you do. And actually, it would be fine if you were both like, hey, you know, but neither one of us care about debt. Run it up with Chase. Let Chase be, you know, the officiator of your wedding. You know, Chase Bank. You stand your ground. I, I would tell this man, stand his ground. Um, but she basically, I asked her to move it back. She said um, if the wedding doesn't happen when it's scheduled, just like that, there's kind of no reason for us to continue. Snaps. Good. Dumper ass. Dumper. You know, I I'm going to tell you this. When I got married, even though I am divorced, okay, when I got married, we had a really inexpensive wedding. Um, no gown. Um, it was just at a simple little white church, you know, a little white steeple church, all right? 
here in Florida. Um, really, really simple. That is at least one thing we, we, we did agree on that, all right? The marriage did not last. Um, it is what it is. But we both at least agreed on that. This, this guy sounds very young, okay, by, in his 20s, maybe early, early mid-20s at the latest. If I were his best buddy, dump her. Any woman who tells you that you must go into debt for a luxury, like a wedding, and a wedding is a luxury, folks. Let's admit it. It's a luxury. Who tells you, and, and I'm going to tell you why she's telling you this. She's, she wants you to go back into debt because she's trying to oppress her friends and family. That's what she's trying to do. I mean, this, this is kind of reads like an open book, okay? And she can't impress her friends and family to the extent that she would like to impress them if she thinks her future husband is going to be tight with the funds. Never mind that her future husband has worked to get himself debt-free and, from what I can tell, at a young age. Dumper. Don't need her. Dumper. And I don't know if this is something I should hold my ground on or as a man if I should make this happen for her. No, 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 no. Hold on. Pepsi, everybody got, take a sip of tea. Let me tell you something. Let me talk to this young man. Woman to young man. No woman who truly loves you and I'm going to talk from a woman's viewpoint, my viewpoint, my experience, okay? No woman who truly loves you is going to ask you to ever do anything that would harm you. If going back into debt would be harmful to you, and it is harmful, debt hurts, debt costs. No woman who really, really loves you would ever ask you to step back into a world that you work so hard to escape. No woman who really, really loves you will ever ask you to say to think that impressing people is more important. I don't, speaking for myself, I don't buy into that crap about, oh, you know, the wedding is all about the woman and making her happy. It does not make a man unmanly because he says, hey, we have a budget between us this is what we have in cash these are our financial goals and I'll be totally honest if she doesn't if you and her don't see the same financial goals don't get married because I can tell you what type of wife she's gonna be she's gonna be the type of wife that when you get married and you present her with a house she's gonna look at you and say well that's not good enough She's going to be the type of wife that when you present her with a little used car, you know, maybe it's got, you know, 40, 50,000 miles on it, but it's paid for. She's going to look at you and say, well, how come that's not a Lexus? How come it's not a Mercedes? She's the type of wife that if you go out to dinner with all of your friends, okay, and you're trying to be on budget, she's going to expect you to pick up the entire tab, regardless of what it is, regardless of who came, regardless of how much they ate, and how much they ate in comparison to you, because she's out to impress her friends. This is the type of woman, and it, you know, I, I'm going to be honest, maybe not all women will agree with me, that's fine, banter away down below, I will stand my ground on this. No woman, in my opinion, that cares about her guy, I don't care if it's a husband, boyfriend, okay, no woman is ever going to ask that man to put himself in financial harm. Do your man no financial harm. That is my rule. That is my rule. Do your man no financial harm. A woman who guilts you into thinking that you somehow or another owe her the wedding of her dreams and if you don't provide it for her that somehow or another you're not the man and she's trying to convince you that you need to step up and pay that bill to be the man no 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 young man you got it wrong you got it wrong she at this point as far as I'm concerned needs to convince you that she's even worth marrying Well, the surface problem is that she's choosing a wedding over you. Bingo. <laughs> right. Like... Uh, that, that, yeah. And, and, and um, Rachel's right. Okay. Rachel Cruz is absolutely right. 
She's choosing her friends, her family, and her image. That's what she's that's what she's choosing. She's choosing the image. She wants everybody looking at her. Well, I'll tell you this. They may all be looking at you on your wedding day, but when that bill comes, they're all in the other direction. Remember that. When the bill comes, they're all gone. They're back to their financial, you know, little financial lives. You're stuck with it. Which you're kind of involved in the wedding, so little, this is kind of oxymoronic. It's a little, it's a little crazy. <laughs> but then the, there's deeper stuff. I mean, I would think, yes. though, Anthony, there's other stuff going on, right? I mean, is it that, 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 I mean, do you have a pattern of not doing what you say and she feels like that this is part of it? I mean, like, is there is there other stuff or is it really that simple that she's like, if I can't have this wedding at this date with $20,000, I'm done. Like, is it re uh, was it really that cut and dry, or have you guys been? Uh, we've been fighting uh, since we got engaged. Fighting about what? Is, about what? Uh, all right. Before we get into all their whatever it is they've been fighting about, there is a sign right there, folks. Red flag. I need to get a red flag and wave it in the air. Red flag. Fighting all the time. The, you, you know, is this the person you want to fight with as your wife? Think about that. And then it's just a person you want to fight with when you have two kids. And when she has two kids and she's telling you that your job is to work 90 hours a week so you can impress other people. This woman is showing, in my opinion, how shallow she is. This is shallow. I, I'm, I'm getting slightly off topic here, but I am going to veer just a second because I think, I think a lot of men... You know, we, we see so much of this, you know, crap on TV about these women who just think it's all about, you know, impressions and how much money, you know. And I, I'm the type that, here's my, here's my take. When a man takes me to a restaurant, okay, I don't care if we're at a fancy restaurant or if we're at a casual restaurant. It makes no difference. I have a very simple rule. I never order more than what I would order if I were paying the bill myself for me at that restaurant okay so if I am at a steak restaurant and I know that hey on my budget the most I'm going to order is you know I would order $25 a day if that's what I if I were paying for myself then guess what that's the same rule I have if the man takes me I don't change my eating spending habits just because somebody else may or may not pick up the tab. It's a rule that I've always um, lived by. I strongly believe that the way you treat a man and the way you either do or do not respect his finances, okay, says a lot about you as a person. Um, I know people will see on TikTok videos, you know, some chick shows up, she's late for a date, there's one floating around, okay, she's late for a date and she doesn't just want the man to pay for the dinner, but, you know, she wants to pay for the kids, yada yada, and I'm just like, this, this is not, not the way you do it. A woman who cannot respect a man, in my opinion, financially, in other words, she's trying to guilt him with money, she's saying, she's giving ultimatums, financial ultimatums, that's a woman who doesn't respect you as a man. And that's the woman you need to dump. And I'm even the type that, you know, people will say, well, I'll go to counseling and therapy. No, 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 no. That, that's her nature. It's who she is. It's who she is. You know, I've, I, I think counseling and therapy can work when it's something like, you know, who, left, who leaves the toothpaste? Could you move the toothpaste to the other side of the sink? Could you put down the toilet? You know, things like that. But there are certain things that are just so inherent in the person, okay? You can't, you can't counsel your way out of somebody's personality, all right? All the counseling in the world would make me less chatty. Trust me, my parents have tried on that one, all right? Um, all, I mean, when, when something is just a part of who you are, you can counsel and counsel me all you want. It, it, I'm going to revert right back. This woman, I'm sorry, but um, you're too good for her. That's why I tell this young man, you're too good for her. There are women out there that will respect your wishes financially. And there are women out there that will understand that, hey, you know what? 
if we can go in with as little you know cost on the wedding as possible we can take that maybe we can put on the down payment for a house or maybe we can upgrade a vehicle something that is much more long term than a bunch of friends and family you know um, gawking at you for a day yeah and you feel like a princess but you know just like Cinderella when the clock strikes midnight you know the coach goes back into a pumpkin right Typically. for me it's the cost of it she says that um I'm being greedy and this is something that people, mm -hmm. you know, pay for. No, no, no. People don't. No, 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 no. You are not being greedy. Absolutely not. I'm telling you, this, this, this is a cross you need to die on. Okay. This is a cross you need to be willing to stand, stand your ground and say, I'm not budging. Let her go. If she's guilting you and she's not even your wife yet, wait until you sign the legal papers. Then what's going to happen? Well, you know, you need to buy me the nicest house on the block. I understand it's going to take, you know, 60% of your income. You can just work more hours because that's your job. You're the man of the house. This is going to be the type of woman who's going to expect you to supply everything. And maybe she will and maybe she won't contribute. This is going to be the type of woman you will never be able to buy her anything good enough. The house will be never good enough. The car will never be good enough. You could come home with flowers and she's going to complain, why would you buy them at Publix? She could have gone to the flower shop. She's showing her rainbow colors, and it don't look pretty in this case. She's showing you her true colors. She's showing you what she's actually made of. Right? And I've just been telling her, I just don't feel comfortable going in debt. There's other ways around it. I've said, if we can push it back, which we've already pushed it back, it was originally supposed to be uh, happening next month, but due to our finances from coming back overseas, Jeez, we and, pushed it. Oh, that's so frustrating. I'm like, go get a go get go go get married. You guys have been engaged for a year. Go get a yeah. marriage certificate. You guys go to the courthouse. Go get married. Yeah. And oh, oh no no, Rachel. He, 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 his hopefully he, the person he didn't marry no she's not going to accept a courthouse that's not fancy it doesn't splash her on the pages of everything this is not the woman that's going to do that she's just not it she is an image person i see what this young man is realizing is what he thought perhaps he was in love with he really isn't that's what's happening and I'm hoping his youth doesn't fool him and doesn't cloud him. But I'm sorry, th th this woman isn't worth two cents. Let let her go. Let her go find someone who's equally into image. Okay, I have a I'm a budget person. All right, um, my ex wasn't. You know, he he and I were just different financially. Our priorities. You know, I I don't give a rip what car somebody drives. Don't care. You know, um. These, these sorts of things just don't matter to me. But they are things that, you know, matter to him. If you are not on the same boat financially, you're either going to sentence yourself to a life of financial hell because you're going to be working and working and working to pay off debt that she keeps spending and spending and spending. Or you're just going to fight all the time, all right? And that's no way to have a relationship. Um, th there are people who generally... There are women out there, okay? Let's all face it, ladies. There are women out there that are pretty darn shallow. They see men as um, bank accounts, as ATMs, all right? That's what they see them as. And they marry these guys going, hey, you know what? You don't give me everything I want in this wedding, then you're no good. Nah, not at all. There are women like me that exist that absolutely disagree with that absolutely 100% disagree with that method of thinking. And then in six months, well, yeah, I guess that's probably true. <laughs> I guess this would have been like, this is what I would want for you though, if it was in a healthy state. That's fair, that's fair. Is to go do that, and then you can go do a reception another time, but there's, but there are, there are. Uh-uh, uh-uh, nope, nope, nope. She's not gonna go for it. If she were gonna go for something like that, I guarantee you they would have already done it. It's already been discussed. Well, you know, how about if we just go get an inexpensive wedding and then have a big reception? That's what uh, my late mother did when she remarried. They had a very, very small wedding. I mean, it was like just the kids and a couple of super close friends, and that was it. I think there were like 10 people. But boy, did they have a reception that had cars lined up for, you know, I think it was about half a mile walk. 
to get up the hill because there were so many cars. Okay, but that reception was pennies on the dollar compared to what a full-blown wedding church. This woman wants to put on a show, and she wants to guilt her, I guess, her, her fiancé to put it on. Find a better woman. We exist. There are too okay. many red flags here. Let, yes. Let's establish a couple things. Right? A $16,000 wedding is not too much. You're wrong. That is a reasonably priced wedding. I would actually agree. Okay? But, before we hear Dave Ramsey here, the guy is debt-free. He doesn't want to go back into debt. I just became debt-free literally just almost about a month ago. All right? Finally was able to tidy up the last of my debt. I, I don't want to go back into it. I don't care what's reasonably priced. And... Yes, sir. But you are right to say I'm not willing to borrow money to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't make a lot of money. It's going to take me a while to scratch that together. And she doesn't make a lot of money either. So is she itching and scratching? He did say she has 4000 but, you know, if, if she wants to put on a show, maybe her parents can help itch and scratch some money. So in, in the sense that she's right, she probably feels like you don't value her, you don't value the ceremony, and you're not... You know, you don't... So or, he's, she, or he's being cheap. Yeah, you're being cheap when it comes to her. Okay, and that that is why I say, and I'll stand by it. She's the type of woman who's going to say, but my house isn't as good as the other people's in my family. It's not as good as my best friend's. You're being cheap. You don't value me. My car isn't as good as my friend's. You know, you got me a used Volvo. I want a new Volvo, like my friend has. If... Image is so important to her. If that is the thing, if 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 image is so important to her, you have you would have to ask himself how important is it to him. And truly, if it's not important to him, then this is not a match. I wish I had done more financial sleuthing, okay, before I had gotten married. I, I truly, truly failed on that. Yet, you know what's interesting? All the signs were there. All the signs were there. I just dismissed them. And that's probably hurting her feelings. And that's probably where the fights are coming from. How old are you two? Yes. I'm 23, sir. And Bingo! Like I said, early, early, early. Young man, you got plenty of time to find a better quality woman. Even at that age. Even at that age. Okay? You got better. You got There, there are better women even at that age. She is... 24, sir. Okay. All right. So, um... The amount is not out of line. The process and everything around the thing is out of line. Okay, so let's take it like this. Here's a thought. Let's say this wasn't a $16,000 wedding. Let's say we were going to take out a $16,000 student loan. Ah, wow. Yeah. Let's say we we're going to take out a $16,000 student loan. With a... Uh, because we didn't have the $16,000. We didn't have it. We just got ourselves debt free and now we're going to take out a $16,000 loan that we're going to have to borrow and get back into debt for. Debt, in my opinion, is debt. It doesn't matter to a great extent what it's for. You know, ever since I became debt free, one of the things that I do because now I can't afford things more easily than I used to be able to. It's been a long haul to get here, I will tell you that, all right? But one of the things that I do is I ask myself this, because even being debt-free, for the short amount of time I've been debt-free, it's easy to start going, oh, well, I can just get this, and I can get this, and, you know, it's, it's easy to start doing that. So here's one of the things that I do to check myself. I ask myself, okay, I'll give you a good example. I was at Marshall's the other day. Really, really cute Barbie hair flat iron. Oh from Chi, all right, and any woman who does her hair, she knows what Chi is, it's a flat iron brand, it's high end, okay, yada yada, and they had this designer series uh, called Barbie, you know, after the Barbie movie, yes, the Barbie doll, okay, it was really cute, and it was like 60 bucks, and I was like, oh, this is absolutely adorable, I could have bought in a heartbeat, wouldn't have even lost any sleep over it, but I was at Marshall's to buy a gym bag, this is just last weekend, in fact, I was at Marshall's to buy a gym bag, 
I wasn't there to buy a $60 chi iron. I was there to buy about a $50 to $75 gym bag. Um, because of my disability, I use a bag that rolls. So it's a little bit more expensive. It has to have wheels on it. It just helps me out. And um, I, I looked at the chi iron. I had the gym bag. And then I asked myself a question. And this is what I've taught myself how to do. If I were not debt free, would I buy that Barbie Chi curling iron? If I were not debt free. And I asked myself that and I went, no, I would not buy the Barbie curling iron. I would buy it, look at it, and put it back on the shelf and, you know, buy the gym bag. So guess what I did? I admired it. I looked at it. I put it back on the shelf. And I rolled out of Marshalls with my gym bag, which is what I came to buy. And I would have bought it even not being debt free because I need my gym for my therapy. If this were a $16,000 student loan they were going to take out after he was debt free because they don't have the money to pay for the schooling, would that change, your, would that change the picture? And some people will say, well, yeah, but it, it's a wedding and that's a one at a time. Ah, 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 ah. Debt is debt is debt. Think about that. It's just something to think about. When you hear, uh, if I don't get my wedding my way, mm -hmm. uh, I'm out of here. Well, guess what? You're going to hear that the rest of your life. Yes, and I hope, I hope when I turn it back on, he says dumper and not you're just going to have to live with it. If I don't get this car, I'm out of here. If I don't Thank get you! Snaps! Yes! Thank you! You know, every now and then, I, I feel like I'm leading my audience in the right direction. I'm sure not everyone agrees at all times, but that's all right. It's all good. That's why there are different paths, right? This couch, I'm out of here. If I don't, if you mm -hmm. don't budget for my nails and my hair, I'm out of here. So, something I will tell you this, okay? Um, without... Uh, talking too much about you know my ex because that's his life okay um, but I will say for the record because I think it is important that people understand my perspective okay um, I am not the one who uh, divorced okay he chose to leave he chose that you know I wasn't the right person for him he has that right to make that decision um, and enough years have passed on now it's like you know it is what it is but you know when somebody threatens you Okay, I don't care if they've threatened you more than once with divorce. Here's my rule. When somebody says, I'm going to divorce you, guess what? You're already divorced, as far as I'm concerned. To some extent, you're already divorced. Because once somebody starts threatening things like that or says, you know, I'm leaving if you don't give me this, okay, whether it's divorced, I'm leaving, I'm walking out, okay, they've already gone so far as to think those thoughts. I've always told myself, if anybody ever ever came to me again and said, I'm going to divorce you, you wouldn't have to say it a second time. I'd be gone. Because something I've learned is when those words can come out, I'm leaving you, it means they've already considered it as an option. Right? So when so they're not even married and she's already threatening to leave, ooh. Wait, 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 wait till you get married. I pray they did not marry. And I know that sounds, you know, maybe unholy, unchristian, whatever, but yeah, not, not, there are much higher quality women out there. I know. <laughs> so, you know, you're not an ATM machine. Thank you. You're a husband, potentially. Hopefully not to this young lady. She can hit the bricks. Okay. And it's not a matter of as a man, it's a matter of we need to be as two grown-ups in, uh, in uh, agreement, in alignment of how we're going to live our lives. And if we can't establish that I'm not going to borrow money. And so if you, if you demand that we do things that require that we borrow money, then we don't need to get married because that's going to be in, inconsistent and we're always going to be fighting. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Um, as someone who's debt free, it would be like coming, somebody coming to me and saying to me, Carrie, uh, um, you know, we, we need to put you in a whole lot of debt again. And I'd be going like, why? Well, because nothing you have is good enough. Okay. Um, I'd be like, oh, no, I, I, I don't want that. Okay. This is worse as far as I'm concerned 
then let's say one of them had debt and they were trying to figure out how to get out of that debt. This is worse. And the reason this situation is worse is one, you can tell they're on totally opposite uh, pages here, okay? But the other reason that this is worse is because in this particular case, the way I see it, she's basically threatening divorce before they're even married. When you threaten someone like that saying, I'm leaving, what she's basically saying is, I'm going to divorce you at any time during this marriage. I will divorce you at any time. That's not, that's, that's not a marriage. That's just, that's just not a marriage. And threatening. I mean, at least two people can be in debt and try to figure out, you know, okay, one's out of debt and the other one's in debt and they're trying to figure out how to pay off the debt, okay? But it's not one saying to the other, if you don't give me my, you know, if you don't give me my materialistic possessions, you know, if you don't give me my materialistic possessions, I'm going to leave you. I really hope they didn't get married. Oh, Lord, I'd like to know. And it's not good. It's going to lead to another divorce or a divorce in the future. So we don't need to do it. Ah, yes, I am leading my audience down the right path. <laughs> that. But if we can be in agreement that the amount is reasonable, but the process, the ultimatum, I'm out of here if I don't get what I want, spoiled little brat routine, um, or the process of I demand you borrow money to make me happy, um, and again, that's against your values, then yeah, this is over. This is why I said earlier, counseling won't fix this. This is a personality issue, okay? This is personality issue. This, like I said, it's not who left up the toilet seat. Could you please lock the door, the upper latch, and the lower latch when you leave, okay? This is personality. This is who this woman is. It's almost like there's really nothing here to negotiate. There's nothing to talk about. This is who she is. She needs to just yes, check out. So no, 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 no. She can stay the princess she is and go find some other sucker. He needs to check out. Hand, hand, hand her back the key and leave. And if she comes crying back, no. Once someone has shown you, what does that say? Once someone shows you who they are, trust them. She, she's shown you. It, it won't matter. She, oh, no, crying in tears. You know, come back. No, 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 no. She's already shown. She has revealed her colors. So, uh, so if I were in your shoes, obviously you guys are in love or you think you are. No, they're not in love. No. Um. If they were in love, I think it's over. And and what I fear is that he's 23 and he'll buy into her BS about, you know, oh, but you're the man. Because 23 is young and it's very vulnerable. But check out this guy when he's 50 years old and has a wife like this and they're deeply in debt. And he's going to look back going, you know, I remember when I was 23 years old and I was completely out of debt for a short period of time in my life. And if you're going to go into debt, Go in, at least if you're going to do it, do it for something that's going to, you know, really bring you, you know, uh, what is it? Um, it'll really help out your marriage, you know, down payment for a house, something like that. Um, I, I would try to sit down with a pastor, a chaplain, you're in, in the military, get a chaplain to sit down with you, uh, a good Christian chaplain. Oh, okay, we're going to listen to Dave Ramsey here for just a second. Let's see how this goes. Um, is the only way I know to get at it. Um, uh, so, uh, or go see a pastor at a local church and sit down and try to get some coaching and some counseling. Some oh, no, no, he don't need coaching. He can just watch. My, no, no, I, I, I will be his coach. There are better women out there that will treat you with more respect and prop you up as the man you would like to be. You don't need to go to a daddy's princess. Let princess go back to daddy, okay? Let him pay for the bills. You go find a woman who can stand up on her own two feet and make you feel proud of who you are. Because the right woman will lift you up. She will make you stronger, okay? As you will to her. None of this princess garbage and guilt. There, see? I, I just solved it. You don't have to go to a pastor. It don't even matter if it's Christian pastor or not. I just told you. All right? There you go. Relational input on how you guys deal with this. It sounds like you're talking at each other instead of with each other. Yes, sir. Like she's not hearing how important this is to you, and you're not hearing how important this is to her. 
and so it comes down to you have to borrow money to make me happy. That's probably not what she really means. No, 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 Mr. Ramsey, in all due respect, it's exactly what she means. She's 23 years old. Okay, she's old enough to at least express that part. No, it's exactly what she means. She's throwing a fit. Okay, daddy's little girl is throwing a fit because she's not getting what she wants. It's exactly what she means. She, she's, she's not mincing words, at least from what we hear on his side. Bas, bas, as he said at the beginning, yeah, she's basically saying she's leaving. No, there, there's no mincing words. I don't get my dream wedding. You don't spend the $20,000 on the wedding. I'm out. There you go. There, there is no mincing words here. This is about personality, and it's about values. And the personality and the values don't mesh. And no Christian pastor... All right, no disrespect to the Christian pastors, all right. But no, no, no pastor, no, no pastor. There's a pastor, it's a pastor. I'm thinking pastor out to cows. I apologize, okay. No pastor is going to fix a warped personality that says, if you don't give me this, then you're not enough of a man. And this is just, literally, this, this, this to me is just the beginning of a problem. I hope she's not that immature and shallow. Oh, yes, she is. Um, many of us women have been 23, and we've never made comments like that. Yeah, no, she she is that immature and shallow, yes. Um, I, I've come from a whole line of women in my family, and I've never known any woman in my family to make comments like that. I've not known any of my friends to make comments like that, and we've all gone through our 20s and 30s successfully. No, she, she is that shallow. She's probably just saying... Dude, this has been going on forever. <laughs> you know, it's been going on forever. And I don't I don't see how we're ever going to get there. And you can get there without having to spend $20,000. She wants to get married, go to the church. Go to a little white church. Have a recep have a reception afterwards. Make it a huge reception if you want. What's the goal? Is the goal to get married to the person you love or is the goal to impress your family? What's the actual goal? And I can't, you know, if we don't borrow money, I don't know how we're going to have $16,000. I don't know how we're going to have a decent wedding. But a $16,000 wedding with both of you working and household income would be the equivalent of about $70,000 uh, is not unreasonable. Dave's caving into her. All due respect. He's, oh, jeez. Yeah. It's not, if you had the cash. It, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a $16,000 wedding if you had the cash. They don't have the cash. He doesn't want to go back into debt for it. Because when he wakes up the next morning next to his bride, okay, they're right back in debt. They're right back to where he worked so hard to get out of. And to think that he would marry a woman who does not respect, or I shouldn't say respect, to think that he would marry a woman who does not value debt freedom. There's nothing wrong. Hey, if they both want to be in debt, you know, go for it. You know, don't involve me in that budget, but that's what they both want. Then you've got, you know, common ground. But when one says, look, I, I can get married without having to get back into debt again, and the other goes, oh, no, no, you can't get married unless you get back into debt again. These two are not a match if we are looking at statistics. And we can put the cash together. Um, by the way, during this year while you were getting out of debt, she put a whole $4,000 towards this. And that's wonderful. So let's have a $4,000 wedding and we'll call it done. Where's her? If she makes the same amount of money, uh, it's not your obligation to man up. I mean, it, you're mm -mm. Really cleaning up something else. Yeah. So, And I don't necessarily believe you have to be out of debt to be married either, by the way. That's another thing I would throw at you. No, you don't necessarily have to be out of debt. But if you've crawled your way out of debt and you'd like to stay out of debt, a little church wedding doesn't hurt. So... We do want you to live out of debt and debt-free because we believe that's the best way you're going to have a great life. But uh, it's um, not, yeah, you're not required to be debt-free to start a fan, have a baby or get married, like these big no, life things. But you but do need to be in agreement. And right, right. And now the big, the big red flags are you're not in agreement. And the, okay. And the fact that they're not in agreement gets me to thoroughly believe that uh, they, they, they should not get married. All right. Okay, one other thing, um, we're at the end of that video. 
uh, walkers. I hope you guys remember to turn around and go home. <laughs> I didn't keep you out walking too long. All right, before I close this, um, I have an incident that happened with a friend today. Um, that I thought I would share with my viewers. She's going to be unnamed. It's actually a great, one of my besties in the whole world, okay? We've known each other since we were 15 years old, and we're now in our 50s, all right? Mid, crawling into later 50s. Um, I had spent some time trying to convince her to use her savings account to pay off her student loan debt, okay? So basically, she had a savings account. She has student loan debt. Um, I'm not going to say how much, but her savings account was more than enough to pay off her student loan debt, okay? And um, she would need to use about half of her savings account. So fifth, almost exactly 50% of her savings account would be needed to be used to pay off her student loan. Well, she balked at the idea of doing that for quite some time, I'd say at least probably about a year, and I kept saying to her, you know, why won't you use your savings account and pay off the student loan? Well, she kept hoping for loan forgiveness, is what she kept hoping for. And um, folks, if, if you're holding on for loan forgiveness at this point, it, unless you're already like on one of those uh, programs where they're forgiving loans that have already been out for 20, 25 years, or you're in one of those schools that are now defunct where they're giving you you know, the, uh, what is it, the forgiveness. As far as it relates to that ten and $20,000 loan, folks, those, that, that day is gone. That ship is sailed, gone. And I really encourage anybody who's still waiting, you know, holding on to your student loan bill, you know, clutching it like pearls because you think that, you know, perhaps, you know, that ten twenty will come along and, you know, pay it off. No. I would tell you, if you have the money, pay it off. And Part of the reason I would tell you that or to pay off a big chunk of it, whatever you can. Here's why. Because we all know at this point, okay, most people know, you can't, you can't go bankrupt on those loans. And here's another thing I told her. Pay off that loan while you have the money now. Before something comes along that takes that money in another direction. Because student loans are the one area you cannot file bankrupt on. And so I have been begging her for almost a year, okay, I, I, telling her, pay it off. But another reason she didn't want to pay it off is in addition, you know, in addition to hoping that the ten dollars to $20,000 would, forgiveness would come in, she also had a hard time just wanting to cut that savings account down in half. It was just kind of like, you know, she, she would say, Carrie, you know, I've got so much money in my savings account. It was in the double digits, okay. Um, you know, I, I have so much money in my savings account and I just can't imagine cutting it in half because then it's like you know my money's gone and I said to her no I said because right now student loans the interest as we know has started back up again okay the student loan interest has started back up again and I said to her but now as it always has been the student loan is costing you money the moratorium period is over all right the student loan, I said to her, is costing you money at this point. So you're holding on to a savings account that you're basically paying every single month to hold on to so you can hold on to a student loan bill. Well, she called me today, and uh, I was just so grateful because she said, I went ahead, took your suggestion, and I paid off the student loan in full. And she still has half of her savings account left. And she herself is now also debt-free as a result. Those of you who are holding on to money that could potentially pay off your savings account or a great portion of it, but you're waiting and hoping that that ten twenty thousand dollars student loan is going to come, let it go. If you can let it go, I would do it because at some point in life, something else is going to come along and it's going to urge you to redirect that money. The problem is the student loans are the one bill you can't go bankrupt on. And so before something in life redirects that money, get rid of the one thing that you can't file bankrupt on, your student loan bill. And I will tell you this, um, you know, I understand the feeling, I totally get it, when people say, but it just makes me feel like my savings account is gone. Guess what? Your savings account's already gone. And this is something I said to her, your savings account is gone. Your savings account you know, minus what your debt is, there's your actual savings account. So let's say, you know, you have $25,000 in savings, but you owe $12,000 on a student loan. You don't really have $25,000 in savings now, do you? So it took some finessing on my part to get her to do it. I mean, ultimately, she made the decision because of what she wanted, uh, not because, you know, of what I do. I mean, you know, this is just you know, her, her, her friend for, you know, decades, all right? But she made that decision 
on her own, but uh, I really kind of just prodded her to go, look, you know what, your savings account is only as strong as whatever your debt is, okay? And so she had this student loan that she could wipe out in full and still have 50% of her savings account left, okay? And her house is already paid off as well. So if you're in that position, get rid of your student loan, get rid of it before something else comes along that begs you to put the money in some other direction. And then one day you look back and you go, I should have gotten rid of that student loan when I had the chance. All right, I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I thank you for joining me this Thursday evening. I do hope you will consider subscribing and you have a wonderful night. Good night.